to, to, to recap first about the history of this community, it started late in 2010. Um, where we were first approached as bridge by the Xenex Foundation, who were interested in the idea of bringing together innovators who worked in maths and science learner support. And um, the first thing that we did in about sort of October, November 2010, was do a research process where we went around and interviewed key innovators working in this field to say to them, was there a need for a community of practice in this area? Was there commitment to the idea of a community of practice? And if so, what were the areas that really needed focus? And the research showed that there was a need for a community of practice, one that would have, uh, that would probably be based on Harting, but would have a national reach, and um, one that needed to look at four specific areas. And those areas were tertiary access, um, and, and that really came about because a lot of people were saying, why is it that so many maths and science learner support programs at school level work in terms of getting learners to pass a trick, but they don't actually work in terms of allowing learners to access the tertiary world and succeed in the, in the world of work. So, so one group, one focus group of this community that then emerged was focused on, on tertiary access. The next area that was agreed on was one that would look at Saturday schools. What um, Saturday schools there are, who has resources to share, who needs resources, um, where can collaborations take place. Many of the funders um, who we interviewed felt that monitoring and evaluation needed to also be a focus area. I think that funders and providers alike felt that it's really hard in a development context to establish actually what effect your programs are having. And so a focus group on M&E started up. And finally, the fourth of the focus groups was one on, on, on learner selection. And one that looks at what different selection methods and different selection criteria do to learner results and learner performance and throughput and so on. So those were the four groups that emerged late in 2010 with the development and, and start of this community of practice. And um, I thought it would be helpful just to diagrammatically represent it in this way and then go through a summary of each of these areas of the group. Remember that what, we, what we're doing today here is meeting as the main maths and science learner support community. This is the overarching body. But many of you belong to some of the focus groups as well, so I'm giving you an overall sense of this. So with the main maths and science community, um, our last meeting, as I said, was on the 12th of June at Sabona. And there we were led by Pat through a, a, a focus on reflective practice and what reflective practice means for us as a community. And then Jennifer Biscard from Kalisa Management Services did a presentation on the school functionality instrument that was developed for the Maths Chair project. Uh, and it's going to be shared through the bridge um, platforms. Um, and then we worked as groups and we focused on the two areas that this group has been more and more uh, moving towards um, working on, and that the first area is, is working with the characteristics of a good teacher, uh, and the second area has to do with um, donor mapping and donor coordination, uh, with specific focus on the Kudi Beng cluster that, that Leah represents. Um, in the interim, Bridge has been working on the actions that were agreed at the last meeting, and we're going to give you some feedback on that, on that now. And to look at the focus groups and give you a brief recap, um, since our last meeting in June, we've had a meeting of the tertiary access group. The 25th of June, we met at the Cecil and Zalo Foundation and Suzanne Hutting from Learning for, for Performance Improvement led a discussion on the green paper on post-school education and training. And at that meeting, there was an agreement that at the next meeting, there'd be a focus on SACWA's career guidance and support tools, and in fact, on the 27th of August, Edson will be doing a presentation in that regard. And there'll also be feedback from two research teams, one of which is looking at factors which influence subject choice at grade nine, and the other is looking at research into opportunities available to unemployed science graduates. So that's what the 27th of, of August is going to focus on. Our Saturday schools group didn't meet in this last cycle, but we have an upcoming meeting on the 21st of August next week, where Femi from Vit School of Education will be looking at their learners' mentorship program that they run. Um, <clears throat> the monitoring and evaluation group met in June, where Caroline Long of University of Pretoria's Evaluation and Assessment Centre 
presented a model of assessment and also uh, presented the work she did on her PhD using the RASH model of assessment with maths learners. And in our upcoming meeting in September, Kutpranong are doing a, a presentation on their learner support program and the recent evaluation process they went through and the feedback they received from their, their independent evaluators. And then with the last focus group, um, the learner selection group, in uh, late in May we had um, the Paul Hobden, Ros Jeff, Letty Miles presentation on learner selection, uh, where Paul spoke as the uh, evaluator, Ros spoke as the program manager, and Letty spoke as the funder, and they all gave perspectives on the same on the same work. And in our upcoming meeting early in September, we've got AEC presenting their learner selection procedures and how those have changed over time. So I think that will be an interesting meeting. So that's a brief cap of the work, recap of the, the work of the community and its um, focus groups. Then just to go back to this main community and, and, and talk a little bit about what we've been doing, three areas of activity have started to emerge here. One that's looking at this issue of donor mapping. So. We're looking at the Akutibeng region. Um, we've worked closely with Leo and her team to get the data out of all five districts, um, to put the data together into a consolidated spreadsheet, to look at a gap analysis of what information is missing and to fill in those gaps. And we've got quite far with that, and we've got a, 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 a reasonably comprehensive spreadsheet of information at this stage from the districts to share with you today. <coughs> But we're bringing that back to you today to look at what else do we need and, and where to from here with that. We've also been working with De Beers looking at that proposed donor meeting that, um, that, that De Beers hoped to host. Um, and we've also been talking to the Xenex Foundation about a, a donor meeting that they'd like to engage Chikalulu and Sassel and Zalo Foundation ab about regarding specifically funding a, do uh, a donor co coordination and donor mapping process. Um, there's also the leg of this group that is looking at teacher development and that's been drawing up this teacher qualities list and forming a kind of a matrix. Um, and the idea is that we can map our own provision against that matrix ultimately. But we've also been looking at mindset materials and Colleen has distributed quite a lot of information about materials that have been developed and are available from mindset as well as materials that are currently in development. Um, and then we've got a general stream, and uh, that has been a stream where members of the community have brought information to the community and shared it with us. So I refer to the fact that at our last meeting, Jennifer Biscott spoke about that school functionality checklist. And today we've got a presentation from Vicky Lindsay of Count about um, using the ANA assessments um, and, and gleaning information from ANA results. So um, I just wanted to give this recap to give you a sense of the different hubs of activity in this community and in its subgroups, and to give you a sense of the kind of traction that, that has been developing and the momentum that's been developing in this community. And that's really thanks to all of you. So thanks and back to Pat.